in this example in this video I'm going to show you uh, an example where we have to prove or we have to find all real uh, theta such that 3 plus 2i sine theta or 1 minus 2i sine theta is, is purely real okay what they're saying is this is purely real there is no imaginary part okay it doesn't sound convincing but we need to believe what they're saying okay this is given so uh, such that this is purely real there is no real part okay now i hope you know real numbers in real sorry in complex numbers you should know i is a complex or is called an imaginary number which is by definition square root of negative one which implies i squared is equal to negative one okay so these are the two foundational principle in complex numbers what are we we have got this and you want to find all values of theta which are real not imaginary okay so what do we know whenever you have <coughs> A complex number in this form with a denominator uh, you need to multiply it by the conjugate the conjugate of 1 minus 2i that's the denominator is 1 plus 2i sorry 1 minus 2i sine theta is 1 plus 2i sine theta so I multiply both the numerator and denominator with the same number so basically I haven't changed this this remains the same because I'm multiplying by 1 okay so what happens now I've done the simple expansion 3 times 1 is 3 3 times 2 i sine theta is 6 i sine theta then 2 i times 1 is 2 i sine theta and 2 i times sine theta that is 4 i squared sine squared theta and this is the difference of two squares a minus b a plus b is a squared minus b squared that is 1 minus 4 i squared sine squared now group the uh, real and imaginary parts separately so this becomes 4 sorry this is 3 and this is negative because i squared becomes 4i squared becomes negative 4 why because i squared is negative 1 okay so this becomes 3 minus 4 sine squared theta plus i i factored out i 6 plus 6 i sine theta plus 2 sine theta okay so what's the next step now I have grouped so this is the real part and this is the imaginary part so you can distribute this denominator to both the parts so this is the real part and this is the imaginary part okay now is a crucial step now we are saying this number is purely real there is no imaginary Part, so that this actually is zero if the whole thing because we started this is a this is a complex number and we are saying that this is pure and by multiplying by doing this much we are not doing anything we haven't done anything because we have multiplied by one so this this number and this number are the same and now we argue if it's purely real there is no imaginary part this part has to be zero okay so this is the real part this is the imaginary part and we are saying there is no it's purely real that means there is no imaginary part so what happens so now so we can say this is equal to zero and that's what I have said so ultimately we end up with 8 sine theta is equal to zero which means sine theta is equal to now this is a trig equation we have drawn the sine graph okay you should be knowing the graph of y is equal to sine theta now you know sine theta starts at zero this is pi by two pi three pi by two we are interested in where the graph becomes zero so sine on the on the right hand side starts at zero it hits uh, zero at pi and then two pi and again it repeats itself and if you go backwards it hits uh, 0 at negative pi and 2 pi, negative 2 pi. So I can say if sine theta is 0, theta 
theta is sine inverse of negative sine inverse of 0, which is 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and so on. And if you go to the left, it is 0, minus pi, minus 2 pi, minus 3 pi, and so on. So if you want to write in the general form, we can say this implies that, uh, I should have written like this, this implies theta, uh, this implies theta is equal to n pi, where n is an integer. In some books, they may say n belongs to z, okay, and z stands for integers or set of integers. See you in the next video.